Modern Wisdom podcast host Chris Williamson and online persona PT James Smith have just released a brand new science-backed productivity drink called Newtonic. It's marketed as like having a secret weapon to help you stay on top of your game throughout the day. But is this just another cash cow for influencers to milk their audience or is it actually based on scientific research and something that you might want to try out? Well, let's find out. If you're new around here, my name is Adam McDonald. I'm a performance nutritionist with an MSc, a natural competitive bodybuilder and a high performance health and fitness coach and currently I am pursuing my doctorate in human performance and innovation. In this channel, we break down complex health and fitness topics into practical application. So although I did buy the product as soon as it came out and I am actually drinking a can of it right now, I'm not gonna talk much about my anecdotal experience because the placebo effect can work miracles. This one study is showing that when powerlifters were given a placebo and told that they were given oral steroids, their squat, bench and deadlift increased massively and significantly compared to the control group. So I'm going to to focus my attention on the ingredients and the effectiveness of these ingredients at the dosages that are in the drink. The website does contain some links to research papers, but I've dived further into the research using my skills as someone who has done research in the past and is currently doing research. This is to help give the full picture. By the end of this video, you will have a clearer idea of how this stacks up against other popular energy drinks or focus drinks and whether or not you might want to try it. Firstly, a huge positive is that the single ingredients are actually listed with their quantity amounts and not as a proprietary blend. Companies can and often do lump all of their ingredients under a proprietary blend and give you one total gram amount. Usually they do this so that they can put in ingredients but at a less effective dose or a cheaper dose and basically mislead the audience or the consumers. Newtonic did not do this. The first ingredient listed is Cognizant which is just a patented name for something called CDP choline or Cytocholine, all the same thing, it is a precursor of the synthesis of phosphatidylcholine which in its itself is involved in the formation of neural cell membranes. In elderly adults or individuals with neurodegenerative diseases, there seems to be some benefit or neuroprotective properties to consuming citicoline, and I'll be using citicoline throughout this rather than cognizant. The method of action doesn't seem to be too well understood, but it is believed to be due to the effects that it has on the increasing of choline in the brain or uridine. One study in 100 healthy adults over the age of 50 found that after consuming 500 milligrams of citicoline, the same amount that's in Newtonic, for 12 weeks, episodic memory increased significantly. One limitation in this study that the authors did call out is that they only included subjects with age-related memory impairment. Another study in healthy male teenagers found that after 28 days, compared to the placebo, the citicoline group had a multiple-fold increase in motor speed and attention. We see similar results in women aged between the age of 40 and 60, but the supplement failed to improve working memory in that study. One kind of concern I guess I would have is that there are no studies in anybody between the age of 20 and 40, which is probably the biggest demographic target for this drink. That doesn't mean that it doesn't have an effect with these people. It just means that there is a gap in the current literature. In addition, I pretty much covered all of the research here in healthy people when it comes to citicoline or cognizant or CDP choline. Again, all the same thing. And the trials that do include healthy people last for at least four weeks. Interestingly, on a side note, the largest amount of research in citicoline is on its effects on cocaine withdrawal. And there actually seems to be some promise here. So overall, I would give it a B plus here for the citicoline. They use effective dosages and there does seem to be some promise in the area of attention, but there's such big gaps in the literature still that it just doesn't get an A. Rhodiola rosa, don't know if I'm even pronouncing that right, but it's something that I've used personally many times and it's an adaptogen plant mainly known for its stress reduction capabilities. As supplements go, there's actually a decent amount of research in this ingredient in healthy humans, particularly when it comes to mental fatigue and cognition. 20 days of low dose supplementation increased students' exam scores by 8.4% in one study. Two weeks of a similar dose improved doctors working performance by approximately 20% in another study. But interestingly, at a higher dose, similar to that in Newtonic, it can have immediate effects with one study showing that in military cadets, they're able to reduce their overall fatigue and mental errors two hours after ingestion. So overall, an A here. L-theanine is an amino acid found in small quantities in many herbal teas and is well known for its anti-anxiety properties. It's believed to be so effective due to its ability to cross this selectively permeable membrane called the blood-brain barrier. Barrier. The research on l attention and focus is mixed, with some papers even suggesting that t prior to emotionally arousing experiences resulted in decrements in executive function, potentially related to its anxiolytic properties. That's when consumed by itself. However, when consumed with caffeine, which can often have anxiety-inducing effects, they seem to counteract the effect of each other in a synergistic kind of way. This makes sense. Many people take l before bed to help them relax, including myself, and you don't really want to be on alert or super focused when you're trying to 
to go to sleep. Caffeine is everyone's favorite drug of choice with 89% of US adults consuming it daily. I don't even need to go into the benefits of caffeine. If you've ever had a bad night's sleep or needed to stay up late to meet that deadline, you know how effective this supplement is. According to the data, it doesn't seem to have major effects on attention, but it does improve wakefulness and reaction time. Now, there are some major downsides, including anxiety and restlessness. And if you're unfortunate enough to ever have consumed too many cups of coffee in one go, you'll know exactly what I mean. But as previously mentioned, L-theanine seems to curb off at least some of the negative side effects of caffeine. The combo really is the OG nootropic stack. In most cases of the research which combined the two, the ratio is about two to one in terms of theanine to caffeine, but in Newtonic, it's three to one. I'm not really too sure why, to be honest. Together, L-theanine and caffeine get an A+. Panax ginseng is a plant that is typically used in traditional Chinese medicine, but also appears in many energy drinks. It acts on genes in the brain in a way that I simply just do not understand at all. But some of the research shows improvements in similar reaction tests used in the citicoline trials. The human evidence is building, but at this time, it's still very limited with one group of researchers stating, there is a lack of chronic studies investigating the effects of ginseng in healthy individuals and the results of acute studies are inconsistent. So it gets a B minus. The B vitamin family is kind of complex. They don't give you any kind of cognitive boost per se, but they are essential in the diet. B vitamins are usually cofactors in the synthesis of neurochemicals and being deficient in them is not good at all. But that's the same with any essential vitamin. I don't think they really add much here, but most energy drinks do include them because of their safety profile, but also the downsides of being deficient in them. So will this drink increase your productivity, which is defined as more output per unit of time? Well, I don't know. And maybe it's going to help a little bit. I think there are some challenges that most people are going to face. First of all, people tend to typically want to feel something immediately to assure themselves that the supplement is working. Slight improvements in attention, cognition, or focus are probably going to be so subtle that you don't even notice them at all. Ever since seeing the movie Limitless with Bradley Cooper, where he finds this pill that can make him predict the future, I've been on a quest to find something that will give me even just a proportion of that. Almost 11 years ago, when I was 21 years old, I came up with this smart drug blend, which I called Lucid. It was a homemade concoction of various unproven and probably unsafe research chemicals that people on forums would promote as having these cognitive enhancing properties. I used a pill maker at home to make these supplements and deliver them to all the supplement stores in Dublin where I live and ask them if they would consider selling them on my behalf. But after being told that it was 15,000 euro just for a marketing license by the Food and Safety Authority, that project quickly died. So I do have a real affinity for this area. I wish there was a supplement that had all of the benefits of modafinil without any of the downsides. In general, people overestimate the effects that supplements can have, even the ones that have solid evidence behind them. To increase my focus and attention or productivity, if you will, I like to time block deep work. So turn off my phone and use a countdown timer, keep me on point. I even plan short breaks for social media so that I don't feel the urge to check my phone from time to time. But nothing improves my productivity more than a good night's sleep. And there's a lot of science to back this up. Going from eight to six hours of sleep per night increases lapses in attention by 150% using the psychomotor vigilance test. If you get less sleep than that, then that score becomes even worse. Thinking that you can skimp on sleep, time management, and good nutrition, and even replace a small amount of that with a supplement is really stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. With that said, if you're doing everything that you possibly can within your control to give yourself the best chance to maximize your attention, and you want to sprinkle some icing on the top with supplementation, I think that this is a good product and certainly the best of its kind in the market. I also think that people underestimate the convenience of getting all of these supplements together in a refreshing drink. With a Monster Energy, you're getting similar amounts of caffeine and 80% less ginseng with really nothing else. With Red Bull, you've got less caffeine and some taurine, but that doesn't have any effects on focus or cognition. And Prime Energy is just basically caffeine with some undisclosed amounts of theanine. In other words, very likely very little. If I personally was giving my two cents as a performance nutritionist, I would have added some glucose to the drink as it's the brain's primary energy source. And in fact, their brain uses about 25% of the glucose in our body. But people in the general public tend to really hate on sugar without any context. So I could understand why it might have been left out. So I said I wasn't going to give much weight to my personal experience, but here it is. I do like it. I can't say I've necessarily been more productive, at least yet, but it's a nice change for my morning coffee. I feel energized, but also a slight increase in just overall well being, a kind of clean energy, if you will. I would attribute that to the combination of the ginseng, the caffeine, and the theanine, all which have been reported to have these kind of effects. Will I be using it consistently? I'm not sure. I like the product. I think this company has genuinely tried their best with the limited research and it does taste good similar to that of a Fanta Zero but it cost me over 49 euro or 53 dollars for 12 cans when taking shipping and import tax into account. I don't think it's a scam. 
I would imagine that the markup on products like Red Bull or Monster Energy and Prime are much, much higher because their ingredients are just so much cheaper. And if I can get it at a better price point, I would strongly consider swapping my morning coffee at least a few days a week with a can of Newtonic. And if you like this breakdown, then you might enjoy the other videos that I made where I break down supplements in a similar fashion.